everybody. Uh, welcome to the second episode. Uh, we're a new online show uh, or channel uh, highlighting some of the differences, uh, different perspectives in medical tourism. And uh, medical tourism is about traveling abroad to another country or away from your home for some type of um, medical or cosmetic treatment. And uh, we're going to be focusing mostly on cosmetic treatments such as cosmetic surgery, uh, cosmetic dentistry, uh, hair transplantation, uh, skin rejuvenation, anti-aging treatments, things like that. But we're also going to be uh, spending some time and some episodes also talking about travel and tourism, uh, lifestyle, health, exercise, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that has to do with basically looking and feeling young, obviously, at uh, an affordable cost. Um, I'm Dr. Randy Seymour from MediTours Hungary. Uh, we're one of the leading independent medical tourism uh, agent companies. Uh, we're based here in Budapest, Hungary, and we bring uh, people over for cosmetic treatment mostly. Um, and uh, today, however, I'm not going to focus or we're not going to focus too much on the medical, the word medical in medical tourism. I'd like to talk a little bit more about uh, tourism because I, I, I do believe that uh, next to affordable cost or choosing the right surgeon, um, that you're choosing a destination and a place to go to. Uh, you're choosing that place based upon uh, you know, how far it is from home, uh, what type of culture, uh, the people, their values, obviously political stability. There's a whole bunch of things um, that you're going to choose that destination because besides having treatment, uh, you want to have a good time. You want it to be in, as enjoyable as possible. That's, that's part of the purpose of, of traveling, uh, uh, traveling abroad to get some of this stuff done. So where do we get all the information from? Well, we get it from people who visited uh, obviously a particular country and they bring back all the information about how cool a country is or not cool to go to. Um, we've got short-term tourists who've, uh, you know, come here for a couple of days or uh, maybe a week or so, but you know, okay, they get a little bit of, a little bit of insight into what a place is about, but I wouldn't say that they have a, a deep, deeper understanding of, of a country or a culture or anything like that. So um, in today's show, we want to focus a little bit on people who've actually uh, been here for a little bit longer than the average uh, tourist. Um, so we can call them either a long tour, long term tourist, uh, or you know, we use the word sometimes expat, but let's just call it some, someone who spent a, a more significant amount of time or frequently visits a country and spends time here uh, in, the, in, in, an, in a particular country. I, I really believe that this is very valuable information when you choose your destination because you may not be going maybe one time, but maybe you're going several times back to a country. And like I said, not, not just for knowing on um, what to do there, but you wanna know, you know what, how cool it is to, just to spend time. You wanna enjoy yourself. I don't wanna keep ranting. I wanna, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, today's guest. Uh, Eleanor Gold. Um, I've known Eleanor for a couple of years now, and uh, we're going to have a little short chat uh, with her today about her perspectives of Hungary, things that she likes, doesn't like, things to see. Um, she's from the UK originally, from England. And um, hi, Eleanor, how are you? Hello, hello, hi, everybody. Okay, welcome nice to the show. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to have a, a short little chat here. And um, well, why don't we just start off? Tell me, you know, a little bit uh, before we get into the whole Hungary thing, where you came from, um, a little bit about your background. Sure. Well, I'm British from the UK, and uh, I first came to Hungary um, about seven years ago uh, on the weekend away because my husband had been here previously and to uh, this part of the world and really, really liked it and said, you know, kept saying, we must go, we must go. So we did. And, you know, to cut a long story short, we fell in love with it and bought a holiday home here um, back in 2010, I think it was now. Um, so, yeah, so that's how it all kind of started. So it wasn't as if I had, you know, um, any preconceptions of Hungary uh, as a country or a, a place to travel to. I was more of a, an accidental tourist in many ways. So yeah. it was... Um, 
you know, a bit of a baptism by fire. But since um, then, you know, I, I spent a lot of time here and I've, you know, I've come to really love the country, uh, quirks and all. So, yeah. Have, but, have you ever uh, lived in another country uh, before? Uh, I lived in um, uh, France for uh, about five months, but I wouldn't say that's really living in a country. So, no. Um, so, UK, a little bit in France and... Um, well, it's, it's quite a brave thing. I think that uh, it's easy to travel abroad for a short period of time, but just to kind of up yourself. And I mean, I, I suppose that there were issues with changing career or making a change. There must have been a, a basic desire for you to kind of say. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot about um, experience in life, really, and having an adventure was, was a big part of it. Um, and also um, there was a... A business element because um, I wanted to you know um, be a bit more freer and not work a nine-to-five so I set up uh, my own company but yeah so that that all kind of evolved as uh -huh. we did <laughs> uh -huh. and and when, so you said you got here for, uh, about seven years ago well we brought you came we bought, we, the first time yeah, the first time was about seven, eight years ago. Seven yeah. years ago, yeah, now, for the first and, time. Uh, and you bought a house, and where, where, where is the house, actually? Where um, it's um, in between Sakeshvahirva and Lake Balaton. So it's on the east side of Lake Balaton, which is about, I guess, 50 miles southwest of Budapest. Uh -huh. Looking on the map, yeah. So, so. Uh, as opposed to most people coming to the capital city, um, that, that's quite a jump <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So we cultural we kind of, uh, jump to, to to go out to uh, to move away from the capital city, which is where yeah. most people come to on their first yeah. their first visit or something like that, and say, "Hey, this this looks like a a great place." Can you can you tell us maybe, what, some of your first impressions or how how did that work for you? How did you how did that work in your in your body in your spirit? Uh, yeah, it was quite it was quite challenging, mainly because of uh, the language. Obviously, you know, it's very difficult. I know you're fluent, but for most people it is is quite challenging and I did um, uh, take a couple of exams actually but you know there's uh, there's I've found there's only a certain amount I can get to and as I'm you know paid for my English not my Hungarian there's not that much of an incentive uh -huh, uh -huh. so um, yeah uh, I mean it was certainly um, an eye-opener um, some of the um, the, the culture is is completely different than what I'd, I'd um, expected. The weather was another thing. It's so good and bad. You know, the summers were, when I first came here uh, were hot, incredibly hot for me, um, what I'm used to from, you know, British perspective, where it rains all the time. Um, and also the winters were, yeah, I was quite surprised at how cold the winters could actually be. So it was all, it's more the weather that surprised me and um, the language. Everything else um, was a, a more or less a positive aspect. So people are friendly. Um, I quite enjoy the culture here. It's very... Uh, how, would you, how would you compare it? If you were to compare some of the things that you've seen you know, to the in, from a cultural point of view or or people point of view, how would you? I mean, how would you compare it to to people and from home? I would say it's um it's a bit like going back to the UK, maybe in the nineteen fifties, or not that I was alive in the nineteen fifties, but what I um, assume uh, the UK may have been like it. It had a much more traditional family appeal, so. Hungary is very much about the family and supports family units. Um, it, you know, when you go uh, to a party in Hungary, the whole family's there. There's no, you know, the kids over here and you're over there sort of thing. Mm. So it's very- the good old days. Yeah, I like the good old days <laughs> or whatever people might, you know, have in their head as a picture of the good old days. Um, so it's, I'd say it's very traditional and that might be, the same thing why people might not like it mm -hmm. so yeah so you could say they're um, not forward thinking but i don't see it like that i see it as a uh, hungary is a very you know s strong with their family tradition um and you know that's the way they evolve or have survived over the years i guess so. yeah yeah, yeah. I, that was very similar to mine actually when i got here you know many many years ago that it was it was quite surprising to see your 1950s example was pretty good. Uh, I, I think that especially I realized that the first time that I got on one of the trains leaving Budapest and 
um, I, I was able to, you know, open one of the windows, stick my head out of the train and take a, a ride down actually to Lake Balaton, you know, with, with my head basically sticking out of the train going, my God, you know, it, in the U.S., I mean, this is like, you know, lawsuit material and, you know, they, there's no way for safety reasons that you'd be able to open up the train, <laughs> a window on a train and be able to. So, yeah, it was quite, but I, I think that, that you're right, that there is that, that, that essence of tradition and, and mm -hmm. family and and uh, and also uh, from a rural perspective because obviously Budapest is completely different in many ways Budapest is like for me going to a, a foreign country or like any um, other city it could be any other, well actually it can't be any other city in the world because Budapest is fantastic and I love it but you know it's not rural Hungary and I don't think it's largely representative of Hungary as a whole like most capital cities aren't so um, in rural Hungary, that family tradition is still very much alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people still grow their own food and live more or less sustainable lives. Um, you, know, you know, in our local town, the most busiest time of day is like five or six o'clock in the morning where everybody's cycling to the shop to get their daily provisions. So mm -hmm. it's still very much that kind of bucolic feel to it. So when you got here, uh, you, you were talking about the uh, the language uh, mm -hmm. obstacle. Obviously, um, when I got here, even Budapest was a language obstacle. And uh, yeah, I'm fluent now in Hungarian after so many years. Um, but I did not speak Hungarian at all when I first got here. So it was it was quite a big challenge for me, also. But um, I, I had a, a Hungarian background, so I was I was you would call motivated to, to do my best at, at, at that age mm -hmm. to try to learn as much as I can. But uh, you not having a Hungarian background, if I, as I've understood, um, you've gone out of Budapest. How, how was it to manage? Um... Uh, quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I guess it forced you to do it. It, it was quite an eye-opener when I did learn some Hungarian and I'd listened to some of the um, workmen <laughs> <laughs> and then realised what they were actually so, so. <laughs> so that was quite funny and I did have I have you know plenty of stories when I you know I've gone to the shops and asked and bought the wrong thing um, so that was always a struggle and I think it is for anybody who's running a home and you, you're buying your ingredients and some things you can't get that you're used to um, for example our local shop is um, it's one of those shops where you have to ask for things everything's behind the counter mm -hmm. so if you can't speak the language it's terrifying you know when you first come here and you know so I tried pointing at things and just going that you know mm -hmm. but you know eventually I started um, uh, you know to ask for things properly but I didn't realize I was actually instead of saying I would like so and so I was actually saying things like I love you pint of milk so yeah, every time yeah, yeah. I went <laughs> actually telling everybody I love them. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were quite very friendly. To well, me, it's but. funny, especially when there's a bunch of people around you, you know, yeah. listening to you, trying to get along. And, and like we said before, that the, the, the English language, I think, has been slower to uh, being adopted in the countryside than, than actually here in Budapest. Yeah. Um, but in Budapest, you don't need to speak Hungarian at all. I never, I don't even bother in Budapest. Everybody speaks English. It was, it was actually funny because um, I, I uh, had kind of a story that stuck with me throughout the early days. And it's been, you know, back in, 19, I don't know, 1993 or 1994, you know, back in those very, very early days. I also went to the local shop. And as you said, um, you know, you, everything is behind the counter. You know, and I, okay, I may have known maybe three or four words, you know, by that time in, in Hungarian, and there were only about three or four food choices at that point that you can, one of them was chicken, you know, and um, I was trying to ask for uh, a grilled chicken, and, you know, there were people around me, obviously, and, you know, one or two words, maybe some people knew, and, and uh, uh, the guy behind the counter was trying to ask me what part of the grilled chicken did I want to have? Did I want to have the breast? Did I want to have the thighs or the legs or the wings or whatever? And I couldn't quite understand what he was saying. So I had asked him the word for uh, chicken, bre the breast is, is mel in, in Hungarian. So I had asked him, well, um, you know, I didn't understand what the word mel was. So I tried to say, well, what is a mel? You know? <laughs> You know, and then I had all these people around me. I hear them chuckling a little bit. And then these three guys who are behind the counter trying to help me out because they don't know the English word for male start making 
they, they like look at each other and they're just making gesture, gesture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, mm-hmm, oh, no. type like that, and I'm going, oh, okay, the breath. Now I get it. <laughs> now the breath. Yes, that's what I want. <laughs> that's what I want. So it's it it is it's kind of un- uncomfortable or funny because you know people around you they don't quite understand what's going on, but when you yeah. you, you don't understand that, and then they know they kind of get what's going on. So it's it's it, it's well, I think in, in the textbooks and when you're learning Hungarian, they teach you how to ask for things. But and then and then you have a standard reply, but that reply is never what the shopkeeper actually says to you. It's yeah, yeah, always yeah, something yeah, bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I remember a time when uh, I went out to get a loaf of bread. You'd think that would be easy, wouldn't you? And I actually came back with a chocolate cake. It was a chocolate loaf. But I didn't realise I'd asked for I think brown bread, but you know, a wholemeal loaf. Uh-huh. And it was near to Easter, and I came back and I opened it and I realized it was one of the a, a kind of chocolate it's kind of like a chocolate loaf cake that you get around Easter time yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> bakery and get bread you know it's just crazy yeah I, I think that's a common experience for anybody who spent any type of significant time abroad is that uh, you you've really got to laugh at these situations and some of them you got to remember for the long term because mm-hmm. you never know how long you're going to stay and then some of these things that are you know can be and some of them can be outright embarrassing actually um, can turn out to be uh, pretty pretty funny stories uh, yeah. over time so um, so let's talk about a little bit more about you know some of the things that you've seen uh, you know what would what would you, you've been now for a while so let's start out yeah. what do you like about Hungary let's start with your likes things like that and you can add that a little bit into yeah, sure um, but one thing uh, my husband and I really love to do uh, is to explore Hungary as a whole and go to all the thermal spas there are here. So we, mm-hmm. whenever we go away and we stay at a hotel, there's a chain called Hungest, and they do um, very affordable. Um, and at each of their hotels, they have a thermal spa or and a pool and wellness and everything like that. So we're exploring all them at the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's one thing I, I really do like. I like the wellness side. Um, so uh, the, the thermal baths and spas that seem to be everywhere. So in the UK, going to a spa is really, really expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something you do as a treat for yourself, unless you're very wealthy. Um, and so in, in Hungary, it's, really affordable it's something everybody does it's a general pastime i'd say really yes. and the, the the spas are really good they're good you know they're not just uh, pleasure pools if you like you can actually go there and get uh, a real wellness benefit from them and that that's really why i, I really adore um also you have anything out there where you are sorry sorry do you have any uh, uh, spas or, or things that are, are close to where you are? Actually? Yeah, um, there's um, one in Sakeshvihirvar, a very nice one, uh, an old Turkish one, I believe it is, mm-hmm. that we go to. Then there's uh, lots in Shirfuk. There's one in Shirfuk that's more of a pleasure pool. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Balanton Fered on our doorstep. So we've got plenty of spas that are available to us. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, Hungary, it's not that big. So... The other week we went to the Matra Mountains and mm-hmm. we went to a spa there and that's like two, two and a half hour drive max, mm-hmm. you know, so okay. everything is gettable to in Hungary because it's not a big country. And the other thing is because of where it's placed and bordered with, well, is it seven countries? You can get anywhere in Europe from Hungary. So I really like it as a, as a location as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely uh, located very well, easily in Central Europe, and and, and and the proximity of everything around you. Really, you, you get in your car and you're from one side of the country into the other side in, in just mm-hmm. a couple of hours. Um, yeah, I, I think spa and wellness is is also. I think you would call it well, actually one of the main tourism industries, actually, yeah. um, because you have um, uh, you know many centuries ago you had a huge Turkish influence and 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 this type of thermal water, which is basically um, underneath. 90% of the entire country, all you got to do is, you know, shove some pipe down deep enough and then you'll pop some spring or something like that. And then you're able to, uh, to open up a, a thermal bath. And a lot of them actually have, you know, a lot of these different minerals and ingredients, which are, you know, good for skin, joints, you know, overall wellness. And and well-being. Lake, Lake Balaton itself is supposed to be uh, very uh, beneficial for you as well, just bathing in actually Lake Balaton. So. I think the the Balaton actually was originally a sea, like Pannonia Sea or something like that. So it's actually quite an old thing. What what do I know? You you're quite close to actually to Lake Balaton. 
So yes, uh, that's any, right. any places that you would recommend? I mean, I probably... yeah, plenty. I mean, there's um, Heavies, which is at the uh, west. Uh, westernmost side of the Balaton and that's uh, very famous people come from all over the world to go to the healing baths there it's very nice to go to as well lots of wellness hotels and I've been in the lake there and it is an experience I'll leave it for visitors to you know find out for themselves but definitely worth going to um for younger people or older people or whoever you know who like the party then I'll uh, people who refuse to age <laughs> yes yeah. Okay, people just like fun. Uh, yeah. Shia Fook, which is on the um, south side of Lake Balaton, has, uh, well, it's um, certainly a place for fun. It's got lots of bars and parties, and it has lots and lots of music festivals all throughout the summer. Yeah. I mean, you can't go a weekend or even a day without going to one. Um, and then you've got um, the north side of Lake Balaton, Furred, which is... Um, uh, you know, you've got your yachting and your wellness and your spas there. So it's more of your relaxed kind of thing. So it, it, there's something there for everyone. Then, of course, there's something. Another thing I really, really love about Hungary is the wine. And it's got plenty of vineyards. You can Absolutely. Visit. I was going to say, yeah. don't leave that out, all the wine. No, vineyards. that's my other thing. So yeah. if there is two things I, I love about Hungary, it's the wellness and the wine. Perhaps yes. don't go together too well, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely, absolutely totally agree with it. But let's not leave out the food. What do you think of food compared to the British diet? Um, it's completely different to the British diet. It's um, basic, uh, not basic, I'd say um, home cooked mostly. So you've still got your tradition of home cooked foods when you go to a restaurant um, like a, a chada. I don't know if I'm saying that right. That's uh, it usually just has uh, just a, f a very small menu, but everything is generally home cooked and they have very traditional foods. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best place to come if you're a vegetarian or vegan, though. No, no, um, no. But no, no. Budapest definitely is. Budapest definitely caters for that. Yes. But outside of, uh, you know, in the rural areas, perhaps not so much so. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, actually, one food, I don't know if it's food. <laughs> um, but I love the ice cream in the summer. There's plenty of ice cream stands and things like that. And I, I like langosh, um, but I only have one a year to avoid heart attacks. Right. Um, and I go to one <laughs> specific place to get it, and that's uh, Balaton Al Mahdi. Or coming to us for, for, for liposuction or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have too many of them. But uh, there is a place, I, I go to one specific uh, cafe, or it's not a cafe, it's... Um, part of the strand part of the beach at Balaton Al Mahdi each year and they do a kind of like a Greek salad on top of it and it's it's lovely so that's the only one I ever have so, yeah Any my treat of the summer Hungarian food that you think that um, meets the requirements of the British stomach <laughs> um or that you liked a lot that you would uh lecho I that's really show. like okay, lecho, yeah, that show, exactly. yeah, yeah. which is a tomato and pepper stew. And it's also the only, I shouldn't really say this, it's the only Hungarian food I can cook for a Hungarian. Uh -huh. So each summer I'll have a lecho party and it's the only thing I cook. <laughs> so can you, can you tell everybody what actually is lecho so people know? It's what, what um, it? a, um, a pepper and tomato stew. So it's quite simple to do with lots of paprika, um for meat eaters you can put um mm -hmm. a, a little bit of meat in it or you can put rice in it or you can put you know it's all different ways you can make it so it's a bit like a ratatouille i'd say uh -huh, uh -huh, most yeah, exactly. I, I could think of but it's um lovely in the summer months with some lovely you know uh fritch mm -hmm. yeah which i always say wrong um, no, you said it right. So, did I? Oh, good. I'm right, finally so, been yeah. able to pronounce it. Fritsch is two, two deciliters of uh, white wine with um, sp uh, spritz or uh, yes. water or whatever. Um, yes. And you know. I guess to English people, it would be a white wine spritz. Uh, white or wine a spritzer, spritzer. Exactly, exactly. So that is the, the equivalent, but it's very refreshing to have in the, in the summer. Uh -huh. What about shopping? How, as far as accessibility to the products, name brands, things like that that you can... Um, it's changed. Um, I'm a big fan of Marks and Spencers, and I know they do have a Marks and Spencers in, um, yeah, in Budapest, but not anywhere else. But uh, near to where I live, there's a, a shopping mall, and it's got all the usual brands you'd you'd expect. So yeah. it's and you've got Budapest that sells everything anyway. If you're after something specific, um, so shopping, I'd say for a woman, some of the you might not find some of the 
clothes you like uh, as easily as you would in say the UK so mm. that that's one thing but you can just buy stuff online mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay I mean from my point of view I think there's absolutely nothing that anybody would be worried about in traveling to Hungary I think oh, that's the other thing the I would say it's very safe very safe country to be I mean I've walked um, around Budapest at night time on my own not a problem um, I, I've never ever felt unsafe here yeah. Not, and I have in the UK. Yeah, I'd like to turn a little bit now to you and, and your, your, you know, what, what you're actually doing here or in Hungary or do you, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you do. And... Well, yeah, I mean, I don't spend all my time in Hungary, but... Um... but I see, I'm sorry, I see on your, you know, your LinkedIn page, you know, the, the creative copywriter. So yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I am, I am a, a copywriter, which means that I write for companies as opposed to being you know, a novelist or anything like that. So I use my words to help uh, sell products and influence and, and promote uh, companies or small businesses. Um, and I also uh, run a couple of courses, online courses. One is teaching people how to write emails. Um, to uh, their customers and the other one which is launching tomorrow is a course about writing content on LinkedIn mm -hmm. so yeah so I'm, I'm quite um, into LinkedIn at the moment um, which is a, net, a, a networking platform mm -hmm. and in fact um, I've just been approved to be a LinkedIn local host in Budapest so that means that I'll be hosting networking events in, in Budapest. So I think, I think we have to update, have have to update my LinkedIn page then I think. Yeah <laughs> so so that's what um, I'm doing at the moment I can share some links um, below the video to, to all that but yeah. So I, I, how do you see your future here and uh, let's uh, we can slowly wind down here your future here in Hungary uh, and tell us uh, you know how people can get in contact with you. Yeah, I mean, I've got a website and I'll um, put that um, below creative copywriting and um, I'm, as I said, I'm on, on LinkedIn. Um, as for Hungary, I mean, I see myself more as a, as a kind of world citizen. I, you know, I've got a house here, so I will still spend lots of time here regardless. I'm um, not thinking of um, selling up anytime soon. Um, and I do really, I, I'm quite passionate about people coming to Hungary and seeing it for what it really is because I think sometimes it gets a bit of a bad press yeah um, so I would encourage people to come here especially during the summer months or even during the winter months and experience it for yourself because it is extremely affordable for British people yeah. I mean you know mm -hmm. just, you know a wine and wellness you know my two w's are extremely affordable to do and they're sort of things that actually are quite expensive in the UK mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, that's it from me, Dr. Randy Seymour. Um, I hope that uh, everybody who's watched the show um, has enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see uh, more of our shows. We'll be coming up with some different episodes and um, different topics as well. If you are one of our past clients and you'd like to share an experience that you've had either coming over to Hungary or going over to uh, another country or anything that might have to do with tourism, but particularly uh, beauty treatments and stuff like that, as that is uh, the subject of our show, um, please contact me directly at uh, info at meditourshungary.com. Um, you can find all of our contact information actually on our website at www.meditourshungary.com, which I will list at the bottom of the, uh, at the video here. You can actually register yourself for a free consultation and you can get in con uh, direct contact with either myself or one of our other Meditours consultants and we will uh, put you in contact with one of our um, top professionals. So that's it for me. Thanks for joining everybody. Again, thanks, Eleanor. And uh, we'll be back hopefully uh, soon with 